Hello everyone, I am Emma Chim and today I will be sharing my experience participating in our Virtual Rover Cup Asia Pacific Cold Space Challenge. First of all, here's a brief introduction of myself. My team name is Emma and I am from Singapore. I have been taking part in competitive robotics for the past two years. Some notable competitions that I have participated in are the National Robotics Competition last year and the International Cold Space Online Challenge this year. Next is a summary of the preliminary challenge. I will be starting off with the challenge task. The category that I am participating in is Cold Space Rescue Challenge for Steps 19. Some problems that I investigated are inefficient movement of the robot, the robot performing the wrong actions when similar RGB values are detected, and inefficient pickups and deposits made by the robot which do not enable it to maximize the points gained. Some methods that I use to combat these issues are proportional steering, using a color tree, coordinate targeting, and making some changes to the pickup and deposit functions. I program the robot to pick up RCCBB sets at all times and only deposit when it has collected the maximum amount of 6 objects except in the remaining 15 seconds when it goes straight to the deposit in spite of how many objects it has collected. After implementing these strategies, I obtained the following results. The robot moving more smoothly and accurately, the robot performing the right actions at all times, and a drastic increase in the amount of points gained. All in all, I have reached the conclusion that all problems can be solved with the incorporation of various strategies, which ultimately maximizes the amount of points gained. Moving on is my analysis of the challenge. The challenge mission was to gain as many points as possible within 5 minutes. The challenge task can be broken down into 3 fundamental mini-tasks and a bonus mini-task. The basic mini-tasks are avoiding traps and walls, collecting objects and depositing them successfully. The additional mini-task is to collect RCCBB sets. The overall mission will be solved if the above mission tasks are completed. Next up are the AI algorithms and resources that I used in this competition. The AI algorithms that I used are proportional steering, the usage of a color tree, and coordinate targeting. Some tools and resources that aided me along the way are Visual Studio Code, which is a very efficient code editor due to its simple yet functional interface, Repolit, which allows me to check that every part of my code is working, and Add.Diagrams.net, which is a fast free flowchart maker as it saves flowcharts directly to one's Google Drive. This was instrumental in helping me create the diagrams that I used for my presentations and team description paper. Here's the implementation of all the different algorithms. First up is proportional steering, which combats the problem of inefficient movement of the robot. It varies the maximum speed according to whether the robot has collected an object or not. When the loader object's counter is zero, the robot will move at a maximum speed of 100. Conversely, if the counter is more than zero, the maximum speed will reduce to 80. This is so that the robot is able to sense the traps and avoid them in time as falling into them will cause all the points garnered to be lost. For smooth wall avoidance, the robot finds the minimum value of the front, left and right ultrasonic sensors. The angle to turn is then calculated using weighted average. The second algorithm is the usage of a color tree which combats the problem of the robot performing the wrong action when similar RGB values are detected. It involves the use of RGB values where each color is assigned a number that makes the robot perform a certain function when returned. This flowchart shows how the different colors are split in terms of their RGB values and the various numbers returned with each condition fulfilled. The third and final algorithm is coordinate targeting, which combats the problem of inefficient deposits. It involves the use of Pythagoras theorem and trigonometry in terms of A102. These two methods are used to calculate the angle that the robot needs to turn given the coordinates it is at and where it needs to be. The robot is also coded to target coordinates in a specific route and a deposit zone when it has collected 6 objects, except in the remaining 15 seconds as mentioned before. This is a picture of the route taken by the robot. Here's a video that demonstrates the robot performing coordinate targeting. As shown in the video, the robot first targets the coordinates 1 and 0 to pick up two red objects, before moving on to the coordinates 1 and 1 to pick up two cyan objects.
This is done in a systematic manner such that time is maximized for the robot to collect as many objects as possible within the time limit. Now I'll be sharing about my debugging process. The robot was not performing as planned and the issue was that it was targeting the wrong coordinates. After some time, I realized that this problem existed as I had used the wrong coordinate targeting formula. I managed to fix this issue by using wrapperweight to check the code to see if the values returned were correct and also printed the values out in the terminal to check the angle calculator and see if it was accurate. Here's the conclusion after all the various strategies were implemented. Firstly, the proportional steering strategy resulted in the robot being able to move and avoid walls much more smoothly and accurately. Secondly, the color tree strategy resulted in the robot being able to sense all the colors with consistent accuracy, which ensured that the action sticker were correct at all times. Lastly, the coordinate targeting strategy resulted in the deposits being significantly more efficient and the amount of points gained was also maximized. This can be seen in how my average score tripled from 500 to 1500. Despite this tremendous improvement, there are still many gaps left for me to work on. If I were asked to solve the same challenge again, one amendment that I would make is to increase the flexibility in the route taken by the robot by perhaps having two or more routes instead of just one, as this would decrease the chances of the robot circling around one area should there be fewer objects to collect. I would also like to include a point system which calculates the most effective way to collect the objects given the map as this will further maximize the points gained. Next, I will be sharing my CodeSpace learning experience. First up are the learning points that I have gained from using the CodeSpace robot. I have learned the importance of ensuring that the code is not written during one setting as I will not be able to figure out the issue and debug amongst a ton of code. It is also essential to print out the values returned as this allows me to check if a specific function is running as it should be. Lastly, it is important to check whether the code is working via other means such as Repoit as this confirms if the code is written correctly before running which saves a lot of time. Moving on are the learning points that I have gained from the overall code space challenge. I have realized how crucial it is to create a timeline as this ensures that my plans are organized and I am clear of how I should progress. I have also realized the importance of perseverance as there are bound to be times when one's progress is stagnant or when one's code does not work as intended. Therefore, one needs to stay determined and have sheer grit to overcome the many obstacles that will be faced inevitably. Finally, some points that I would like to share with my fellow CodeSpace participants are that it is good to use tools such as Repoit and print out values returned in the terminal to check if the code is working as planned. It is also good to collaborate with other teams to devise innovative strategies together as this helps everyone learn from one another and ultimately maximizes the points gained for all. Most importantly, one should never give up no matter how challenging it is and continue enjoying robotics. Last but not least, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the following people. The organizers are kept for organizing this virtual competition to get the robotic spirit going, my CCA mentor, Mr. Kenneth Chow, for his expert mentoring, my CCA teachers in charge, Mr. Yeo Pui Hong and Mrs. Tan Hui Leong, for their constant guidance, my CCA EXCO members for the great deal of effort and time they spend organizing meetings, and finally, my fellow CCA mates for their enduring support and encouragement. I would not have had such tremendous fun and gleaned a great deal without everyone supporting me in various ways. Thank you for your kind attention and I hope you enjoyed watching my presentation.